Hello, welcome to Sportscaster News. I am your host, Lawrence Owen. Now, the Tennessee Titans had a very difficult decision going into this season. They had two players they absolutely needed to re-sign. One, quarterback Ryan Tannehill. After he came into the Titans, after the picking him up from the Dolphins, and then he became the starter replacing Marcus Mariota, he became the highest rated quarterback in the NFL during the last year's season. Granted, game manager, but still incredibly effective at what play he had. The other player, Derrick Henry. The Titans decided to extend Ryan Tannehill, making sure that their quarterback position was taken care of for the foreseeable future. That left Derrick Henry, where in which they placed the franchise tag on him, and he signed it. Knowing full well that Derrick Henry needs to be signed long term, this is what Mike Rabel said about that circumstance. Derrick signed his franchise tender. He's under contract. I know that John Robinson and the VP of Football Administrations, Vin Marino, have been in contact with his reps. Having been involved with the NFL for a lot of years, getting deals done is about being patient, hopefully keeping them private and confidential. I'm going to try to respect that and understand that we love Derek, and he understands how important he is to our football team. His leadership grew last year, and I'm looking forward, and I know our team is looking forward to having more of that this upcoming season. Now, the big question is, how much is Derrick Henry worth, right? That's, that's the question between his, him, his agent, and the Titans. Well, let's just look at his career, right? As a career, he has averaged 4.8 yards per carry. Now, granted, in his rookie season and his sophomore season, he didn't get that many carries. He carried it 110 times his rookie season and 176 times his sophomore season. You know, between those two seasons, he averaged about four, three and a half, four point three and a half yards per carry, which is not too shabby. But then in 2018, they realized the more carries Henry got, the more dangerous he was throughout the game. They handed it off to him 215 times. For 1,059 yards, and he got 4.9 yards per carry. Wow. Just wow. And, let's not forget, 12 touchdowns. And that's 2018. Last year, he blew up. Led the NFL in total rushing yardage. Rushing attempts, touchdowns, and yards per game. 303, 303 rushes, 1,540 yards, 16 touchdowns, and a 102.7 yards per game. He had an average of 5.1 yards per carry. That is absolutely beastly at running back. Henry's not shown any kind of signs of slowing down. He has that mentality of just running people over. And for a guy his size, he has an incredible ability to move. His agility is actually quite good considering just the style of play that you think from him. Most guys with his running style don't last long term in the NFL, but we have seen a few who have shown incredible longevity being just a big, solid, uh, just physical running back. Couple that come into mind Adrian Peterson, Frank Gore, both looking to go into their very long term, kind of long term quarterback years, right? Now, will Derrick Henry reach that kind of status? 
that has yet to be seen. But through his first four years, he has definitely been a beast behind that offensive line for the Tennessee Titans. Now, the question is, what do you pay him? What do you pay Derrick Henry? There are running backs out there right now that are threatening to hold out. We've seen it for years now. Ezekiel Elliott holding out. Le'Veon Bell holding out. Uh, Melvin Gordon holding out. Raheem Mozart is now holding out. Dalvin Cook right now is holding out. Derrick Henry not holding out. Signed his franchise tag and is going to play this season with the thoughts that they are going to try to get him paid. You're still here? Awesome! Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoy it, please smash that like button and hit subscribe. That way, you're known when I come up with a new video here on YouTube. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. I plan on going live starting this Saturday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Conversations, man. I You want to know what we're going to have that conversations for? Right down here where it says Twitter. Type that into your uh, web browser. Give me a follow. Everything that I talk about, anything that I am getting ready to post, any kind of video that I'm getting ready to stream or upload, you'll find out when I type that right out there on Twitter, man. Don't forget, sportscaster.com. That's my actual job. That's where I work, right? I am sportscaster NFL news. Me, Joe Nubo, Ray Rout, we discuss all sorts of stuff NFL news related every day. So, don't forget, I appreciate you watching me here, but you can get a lot more information in these little links here. Don't forget, check out the description below because at the very bottom of that description is where you can support my channel and help ensure that my content continues to be uploaded and broadcasted to you so that you know exactly what's going on in the NFL. Now let's get back to the video. I think Derrick Henry absolutely is the heart and soul, and I don't think very many people out there will disagree with me that on offense, Derrick Henry is, it starts and goes with Derrick Henry on this offense. Now, the defense is very, very solid, but everything starts and goes with Derrick Henry. How he goes on the run game depends upon how they play the pass game. Ryan Tannehill is able to game manage and make very safe, efficient throws because defenses around the NFL are so focused on trying to stop Derrick Henry. We've seen that especially in the postseason, where Derrick Henry ran all over the New England Patriots. And how many yards? How many yards did uh, Ryan Tannehill throw for? Like a, a hundred? If that, I think he threw for under a hundred yards in that game. The Baltimore Ravens team that was like, you know what? Even to this day, players and coaches on the Ravens are saying, we need to stop Derrick Henry if we play him. They don't even play him this season. Well, they do. Yes, they do. Late in the season. They play the Titans. I forgot about that. They do. But that's just one team. They're not even a divisional rival. It's one game. They need to focus. They are so struck by what Derrick Henry did to their defense that they're more focused on him seemingly than their own division of the Bengals, the Browns, and the Steelers. That's the kind of effect Derrick Henry has against opposing teams. Even if he only plays them one time, you pay a running back like that. Now, should he get Todd Gurley money, Ezekiel Elliott money, Christian McCaffrey money? That's, I mean, we're talking 
15, 16 million dollars a year for a running back. Many people around the league believe that the running back position, you don't need to pay running backs. That you just use them up on their rookie contract, you let them go, you go draft another running back. And for the Tennessee Titans, I will have to say that they have a good enough or did have, over the last couple of years, a good enough offensive line that they could do that. Now, they did lose Jack Conklin in the offseason this season. But Derrick Henry's one of those guys. He's one of those rare running backs that does not need an offensive line so good in front of him. He can break tackles. He's tough to bring down, especially once he gets his motor going. You pay guys like that. There are rare Four or five running backs in the the NFL at any given time that you pay top dollar to because they are game-changing running backs. Christian McCaffrey being one of them. Derrick Henry, even though he is not so well-known in the passing game, he is so scary on the ground, and he affects how teams approach their game plan against their offense so much. That he is that guy that you have to pay. You need to pay guys like that. That just force defenses to game plan around that one single player. And when you're not a quarterback and they have to game plan around that type of player, you pay them. Period. End of discussion. Will Henry get $15 million, $16 million a year? I don't know. Does he deserve it? Not yet. Now, he's under contract for another season. Let's say Derrick Henry has another one of those 14, 1,500 yard, five yards of carry seasons. Yeah, that's when you pay him. That's when you give Derrick Henry 15, 16 million a year. Because he's just, I mean, last year he showed he just hit teams all left and right. And it shouldn't have been caught off guard because the season before, people seen what he could do. He just wasn't given the carries that was necessary. Last year, they seen what he was able to do, especially in the second half of the season and in the postseason. If If he walks into this season, hopefully the season starts, and by week four, he's been trouncing defenses, they need to pay this man. Now, there's a problem because the Titans' salary cap right now, they're sitting at right around $20 million for the season. And there's rumors that they're looking to sign other people. Next year, which is where his contract will initiate, they're, they're, they only have $45 million cap space. 45 million, that's it. That's not a lot of money to drop on a running back. Now, granted, they have the majority of their team, 56 players, contracted through next year. 2022, that's when their cap space starts to open up a little bit. They've got $81 million. Um, They only have half their team, 32, under contract through 2022. That's when that that's when guarantees could start hitting. That's when they could start dropping a little bit of their guarantees. But 2023 is when they could just drop whatever they want on it. In 2023, just three years from now, the Tennessee Titans has a total of six players under contract. That's it. They only have one player. One player in 2024. Kevin Byard signed in four years from now. So in three years from now, they have six players. Ryan Tannehill, Taylor Lewan, Kevin Byard, uh, B.U. Brinkley, uh, Laurel uh, Marchison, and Cole McDonald. Signed through 2023. But they'll have $174 million worth of cap space as of right now projected for 2023. And most likely it will go up at that point. Because 
I think that the coronavirus, the, the hit on the cap space, will last next year and maybe the year after in 2022. And that's when 2023 will jump back to that regular uh, expected status. So expect them to have plenty of money to drop cap-wise, guarantee-wise, on Derrick Henry in 2023. So they could legitimately do that. Sign him for a three- or four-year contract. I could see giving Henry, because of his style of play, it's scary, right? It is a very scary situation. Because his style of play could leave him hurt. But he is a big physical guy who is incredibly healthy. So I could see them giving him a contract extension from 2021 to 2024 and giving the majority of his guarantees in the last two years of his season and giving him good contract numbers for the first two seasons. If Henry is willing to take money at a later date, you know, the big money guarantees, then I could see him and his agent signing that. It would be a team-friendly deal, helping them keep some cap space to continue to sign people the next over the next couple years, and yet keep him on the team so that they can continue to be a force, possibly not only in the AFC South, but also in the AFC Conference in general and in the playoffs for the foreseeable future. And as usual, I'm Lawrence Owen with Sportscaster News, and until next time, Have a good one. Just because a guy's a player is not a household name doesn't mean we can't make him a household name.